Hello and welcome to NPTEL MOOC on Electromagnetic Waves in Free Space and Guided Media. Guided and Wireless Media, Wireless Media is Free Space as we will see in the next module. Uh, this is module number 12 where we are going to complete our discussion of transmission lines. Uh, we, we are working in the time domain description of the transmission lines meaning that we want to know what is the voltage that would appear at the load or at the input terminals of the transmission line as a function of time and we have used lattice diagrams in order to tackle the case where the load is purely resistive even the source is purely resistive. It may happen that the load resistance will be not exactly same as the characteristic impedance of the intermediate transmission line or the characteristic impedance of the transmission line may not match with the source uh, internal resistance. In that case multiple reflections can occur and they can distort even the simplest of the waveforms such as the step voltages. In many scenarios it is quite common that you will find connections between two ICs. Okay. So, this may happen on a printed circuit board where you are going to put one IC and then try to drive a second IC through the first IC okay. and the line or the wire interconnect between the two it would not be exactly a wire it will be a PCB trace, but that line or a PCB trace would actually act like a transmission line as the rise time and the fall time of the you know IC waveforms at the output would actually be different. So, for example, I mean will be very small. So, if the rise time happens to be just about say uh, 100 nanosecond then this would correspond to a certain frequency and that frequency would correspond to a certain wavelength which you can calculate as an example and then if the line length happens to be greater than that 0.1 times whatever the length that we found corresponding to this rise time of 100 nanoseconds then you have to invoke this transmission line effects something that we have already seen. What we will now see is that when ICs drive another ICs mostly the type of the load that you are going to get will be the capacitances right. So, if for it is for example, you have your NMOS or a PMOS driving another NMOS or a PMOS uh, because there are gates and this input essentially looks like a capacitor gate capacitor as they would call it. So, it is like one capacitive source driving another capacitive load ok. Of course, the resistances may not be exactly uh, negligible. So, there may be some amount of resistance that would be present, but in general giving you an RC kind of a load here. So, RLCL we will write it in order to denote this one as the load ok. So, this is the type of the load that the voltages are seeing. If you now assume that IC1 output can be you know a pulse or a step kind of a voltage or any type of the digital signal that would be propagating say maybe it would be an example of a clock waveform which would be propagating. Then we have to assess what would happen to this clock waveform in the time domain as the source tries to drive the load and the load mainly looks like a capacitor or let us say capacitor and resistor in parallel. This is usually the case of printed circuit boards IC driving another IC. You rarely see a parasitic inductance in this load. So, we will only tackle the case which is practically very important that of the uh, parasitic capacitances or the input capacitance of the gates being the main form of the loads. Okay. To simplify our mathematical analysis or to simplify our understanding of this problem, we will assume that the source can be modeled as say a step voltage source okay, which would be put into action at time t equal to 0 as represented by this unit step. Uh, the source will switch from 0 to V s volts okay, at time t equal to 0. There is an internal impedance we will take uh, internal impedance of the uh, source which we will take it as Z naught okay. and you can clearly see that we have managed to make one approximation that Z naught which is the source internal impedance is the same as that of the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. And then as before we have a transmission line previously we used to have only the resistive loads, but now we will take the simplest example as that of the capacitor okay. and I will label this capacitor as C or I could label this capacitor as CL. Please excuse me not writing the subscript L here it becomes tiresome after a few uh, times that I write. So, I am going to call this as C, but please understand C is basically the load that we are driving. See 
we can analyze this by writing equations but before we do so let us try to get a physical feeling of what may be happening here clearly this presence of u of t means that there is some sort of a switch correct and the switch will be activated or closed at t equal to 0 connecting the source with its internal impedance to the load via a transmission line okay this is my transmission line supposing the transmission line were not present at all so i just had the source and the load connected directly across the source itself then what would be the situation well that in that case we would have a very simple rc circuit which you have seen many many times in your undergraduate course this is a situation at t equal to 0 or t greater than 0 you have a dc source of amplitude vs connected to this capacitor and you are interested of course in finding out what is the voltage across the capacitor which we will label as vc of t so in the absence of any line we do know that capacitors which are initially uncharged meaning that they are not charged previously no voltage exists across them and because the property of a capacitor is that the voltage has to be continuous the volt the as soon as the switch is closed at t equal to 0 the capacitor will continue to hold its previous voltage which is 0 meaning that the capacitor would appear as a short circuit right this is momentarily only before the current which is having a maximum magnitude of vs by z naught starts to charge the capacitor eventually because capacitor acts like an open circuit to dc sources what you would find for t much much larger than 0 or t tending to infinity is that the capacitor would have fully charged to the voltage that it is connected to and the current in this circuit has dropped to 0 no current because the resistance z naught sees same voltage on both sides so clearly current has gone to 0 and the voltage across the capacitor would have reached to its full value of vs and it usually does so from 0 to vs it does so in an infinite amount of time technically uh, but with a time constant as we would call it z naught time c so this tau is called as a time constant and if you were to sketch the waveform okay after solving the equations and other things which i am not going to do here what you would find is that for the voltage across the capacitor vc of t begins at 0 and then exponentially goes towards vs so this is the asymptotic or the infinite or the steady state value that the capacitor waveform will eventually reach and you can clearly see that the time constant of this exponential as after you solve it is given by z naught c and after about 4 or 5 time constants not exactly written correctly here but after about 4 or 5 time constants 4 tau or 5 tau the voltage across the capacitor would have reached approximately 90 or 99 percent of the final value so 99 percent of about vs would have been reached okay so this is what uh, you know if you have studied circuit theory would obviously uh, last 8 minutes would be just kind of a quick review of whatever that would happen in a simple rc circuit and if you understand all this then you may be in a better position to ask what would be the introduction of the transmission line between the load and the source is going to do to the voltage across the capacitor now because we have introduced a lossless transmission line whose one way propagation delay is td you would expect that the capacitor voltage would begin at td because you no know, capacitor is initially uncharged and then it will wait until a time of td for the input voltage to arrive and eventually you know after uh, t going off to infinity or at least asymptotically it would reach a steady state value of vs this is of course what you would expect now let us see whether our expectation matches with whatever the mathematics is going to tell us that this is exactly what is going to happen okay so let us uh, uh, you know do that by writing out a few equations we are going to use kcl and kvl and with a little bit of a help from our knowledge of how the voltages propagate along the transmission line so at t equal to 0 when we close the switch right a step function would be launched on the input terminals of the transmission line which then begins to propagate okay that voltage we know already from our lattice diagram as v1 v1 plus is going to be vs by 2 why because at t equal to 0 remember the uh, equivalent circuit is going to be the input terminal of the 
transmission line with the characteristic impedance of Z0 and then connected to this source which is Vs and Z0 internal impedance and the voltage that appears at the input terminals will be V1 plus because characteristic impedance is matched to the internal impedance of the source V1 plus is equal to Vs by 2. All right, we agree with this. Now, as that voltage begins to propagate down the line and arrives at the load at a time Td, right? So, this is what the voltage would be arriving at the after one time propagation delay at the load. Okay. Now, in the resistive case, what we have seen is that we will generate a V2 minus, right, which is the reflected voltage, which would be given by gamma L times V1 plus. But unfortunately, this equation is incorrect in this present scenario because the capacitor voltage is not going to be remaining constant, but it would actually dynamically change, right? That is what we would expect. The voltage is going to constitute a current, uh, I mean the charging current and the charging current flows through the capacitor, charging the capacitor. Eventually, you know, the capacitor would charge to whatever the value that we would allow or the circuit would allow, but the point is that the voltage across the capacitor is not a constant voltage. If you are little confused about this, think of this case. I have Z0, I have a transmission line connected down here. I send in Vs at t equal to 0. This is match, this is Z0 and let us say this is some ZL. Okay? So, clearly as the step voltage comes in, it will see a reflection and it will actually give rise to a reflected voltage which would be negative and that would be propagating negative or positive does not matter because you know uh, the sign of gamma L of course will decide that voltage which begins to propagate towards the source. Okay? But please note that the incoming voltage V1 plus will be a constant voltage and V2 minus which is reflected as a result of V1 plus will also be a constant voltage. Okay? And this reflected voltage reaches back and because you have matched the source internal impedance with the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, this reflected voltage is completely absorbed. Okay? So, V1 plus continues to be applied because the source is connected yet and V2 minus will be continuously generated as a response to V1 plus being applied and that V2 minus will be of the same shape as V1 plus because both are constant voltages and then this gamma L is a simple number that would be. Um, you know that would give rise to the reflection, uh, I mean that would be the reflection coefficient meaning that V2 minus shape is exactly equal to V1 minus V1 plus shape except its sign may have changed and its magnitude may have changed. This is in contrast to the case that we will have when a capacitor is connected. The capacitor voltage will not be just the reflected voltage you know, if that would be the case, then the capacitor would not charge at all. The capacitor would seem to have changed from one value to another value suddenly and that is not really allowed. So, the capacitor voltage is dynamic. So, the reverse voltage instead of calling it as V2 minus, I am going to call this as Vr of T, where the subscript R stands for reflection or reflected voltage. This Vr of T will be a function of time and it will not be a DC voltage and therefore, it cannot be just a multiple of V1 plus. I hope this part is clear and we will therefore have to uh, you know uh, allow for the fact that because of the capacitors or inductors or cap, you know other type of reactive elements, V R of T will be generated which is the reflected voltage that would not be equal to gamma L times V1 plus. In fact, you cannot even calculate gamma L in the time domain. Why? Because the capacitor at one instant that is at T equal to T D shows that it would be a short circuit. However, as the capacitor begins to charge an open circuit, right? So, you cannot really set a single number to gamma L that is not possible when you have reactive terminations. Okay? So, that is what would happen. However, KCL and KVL still be valid at the load as well as at the source planes. Okay? So, at Z equal to L plane, what you have is the input voltage that is the total line voltage will be input voltage which is V1 plus which is not a function of time, it is simply the step voltage of magnitude Vs by 2 propagating down the line plus Vr of T which is generated as a result of reflection from the load that should be equal to Vc of T which is the load voltage. Right? So, this is a simple KVL that you are going to apply in this loop here and everything is alright. Now, you can also apply KCL here. 
okay. What does KCL say? The line current which is V1 plus by Z0 minus Vr of T by Z0, the minus sign is obviously because the reflected voltage is propagating in the opposite direction to the incident wave. This should be equal to the current flowing through the capacitor, but what is the current through the capacitor? That is C dVc by dt, right. The current through a capacitor is proportional to the rate of voltage change. Now, you can multiply the second equation by Z0 throughout and eliminate here and then rewrite the right hand side as Z0 C uh, dVc by dt. Add these two equations together to get 2 V1 plus is equal to Z0 C dVc by dt plus Vc of t. This is a simple first order differential equation whose solution you may have seen earlier. The homogeneous part of the solution will be proportional to E power minus T by tau where tau is equal to Z0 C that is the charging or the time constant of this circuit and therefore, the solution that you are going to get eventually the solution would be equal to 2 V1 plus because that is the final value that you are going to have. The final value as calculated please remember that this would be equal to Vs and because V1 plus was Vs by 2 twice V1 plus will be Vs itself. Okay. So, the full solution for this equation would be that you have 2 V1 plus that is the capacitor voltage Vc of t as a solution of this ODE will be 2 V1 plus into 1 minus E power minus T minus Td divided by tau times u of T minus Td. Now, why is this that we have written T minus Td and u of T minus Td? Well, it is very obvious right. The voltage that is launched here which is V1 plus will not be available to the load until a propagation delay time of Td right. So, the, the load sees the incoming voltage incident voltage at time t equal to Td and therefore, you have to start your time reference not from time t, but a time Td later on. So, that is why we have a T minus Td and this step function u of T minus Td ensures that uh, we will not make uh, I mean the, the expression to the, that we have written in the bracket here will not be non-zero for T less than Td right. So, that is what this is. Now, we have found Vc of T. We will of course, be also interested in finding what is Vr of t. Okay. Vr of t is very simple, you take this Vc of t from this first equation, subtract V1 plus and you will get what is Vr of t and if you do that, you are going to get V1 plus minus 2 V1 plus uh, e power minus t minus Td divided by tau u of t minus Td. Okay, so, this is the equation that you are going to get. Let us sketch the equations okay, that makes it uh, slightly easier to you know figure out what is happening. So, clearly what should be Vc of t? Let us go back to one slide here and then note that at t equal to Td this exponential will be equal to 1 and 1 minus 1 will be 0. So, Vc at t equal to Td will be equal to 0, but as t minus Td goes off to infinity this exponential will actually go to 0 and what you get is the final value of 2 V1 plus. So, you have exponentially 2 V1 plus here, 0 here and then you can join these you know in this manner. Of course, I have shown that they are finitely joining at a time t which is clearly not the case because technically this would uh, be done at t equal to infinity right. But the difference between 2 V1 plus which is equal to Vs, so 2 V1 plus is equal to Vs will be very very small for 4 or 5 time constants right. So, the time constant of this one is Z naught C. Okay. This is your reflected voltage. What about the incident voltage sorry the uh, sorry this is the cap load voltage. What about the capac uh, reflected voltage? Well, what would be the reflected voltage? The reflected voltage will begin only at T equal to T d and continue afterwards right. At T equal to T d clearly this exponential will be 1 your unit step function will also be 1. The amplitude of this second term is minus 2 V1 plus, the amplitude of the first term is V1 plus. So, the resultant amplitude at Td will actually be minus V1 plus. So, at Td this would be V1 plus. What is the final value? Look at this, finally this exponential term will go to 0 and whatever the term that would be remaining will be V1 plus alone. So, that would mean 
so you are going to have to v1 plus eventually but this has to go exponentially right so this is eventually it's going to go to v1 plus okay so this is the step voltage of magnitude minus v1 plus and then eventually goes off to infinity at some point it does cross over to zero this is v r of t okay this makes sense no why because at t equal to td the step voltage incident from the source has just arrived at the load and at the load the capacitor is being un initially uncharged will present a short circuit meaning that momentarily gamma l will be equal to minus 1 reflecting off the entire incident voltage right to get a better understanding let us look at a tdr scope what is a tdr scope tdr scope is one in which we are going to look at the voltage right at the input terminals of the transmission line okay we are going to attach a scope here and then look at the voltage as a function of time this is my scope and when you look at that that would of course be v in of t is basically v i v1 plus plus v r of t but we have to be a little careful here the input voltage that we are going to write will have to be decomposed into two time instants one at t equal to zero when you launch v1 plus but then at time t equal to 2 td this initial voltage v1 plus will be added on to the reverse voltage right because the one way propagation is td the reflected voltage which begins at td will actually come back to the source at time t equal to 2d right so until time t equal to 2 td okay this is td until time t equal to 2 td our voltage will actually be equal to v1 plus but now this reverse voltage which i have sketched here vr of t has to be added to this v1 plus so at t equal to td the magnitude sorry the amplitude of the reverse voltage is minus or reflected voltage is minus v1 plus incident voltage is v1 plus therefore there is momentarily a short circuit at the input terminals the voltage goes down and then eventually starts to go back up here so what would be the final value well you see finally the reflected voltage is reaching v1 plus the incident voltage is still constant v1 plus therefore the overall voltage will actually reach to 2 v1 plus okay this is the input terminal voltage that you are going to sorry the voltage that you are going to see at the input terminals of the transmission line and this is what you are going to have okay very interesting set of waveforms in pretty much the same way as you would actually imagine going uh, you know seeing this one now without uh, doing any mathematics without doing any analysis i am going to write another voltage okay uh, waveform and then i will ask you what would be the load here okay so this is as a function of time i am again writing the tdr scope so this is v in of t and this time the voltage is going to be same constant v1 plus but then at time t equal to 2 td this voltage would jump to 2 v1 plus and then slowly decay down to zero can you guess what kind of a load we have here yes at time t equal to 2 td the reflected voltage momentarily will be equal to v1 plus meaning that gamma l will actually be equal to plus 1 and what kind of a pure reactive load can give you gamma l equal to plus 1 why it is a inductor right and after that clearly inductor finally should actually act like a short circuit therefore the voltage across the line as well as across the load should be eventually equal to 0 which is what you are going to have so if you see a spike in the tdr scope that spike almost always represents an inductor and if the spike value is exactly 2 v1 plus and eventually goes down to 0 then that would be a pure inductor okay uh, if you connect a resistor across an inductor then at time t equal to td 2 td you will still see that uh, the voltage will rise up to 2 v1 plus but the final voltage will not be zero because now you have a resistor there the final voltage may look something like this right so if you have a matched uh, load there then the final voltage will actually approach only v1 plus okay you can based on what you are seeing from the tdr scope estimate what would be the type of the load okay and that is an important tool that many people use in analyzing the voltage waveforms in a digital integrated circuit or a digital circuit or a printed circuit board so we monitor 
what would be the voltage at the input terminals of the transmission line and then learn about the load okay the type of the load for example suppose the load is short circuit right then if the resistance is again so i am a force assuming all the time that the source impedance is actually matched to the transmission line characteristic impedance which is typically what would happen okay now if the load happens to be a short circuit then the waveform that you are going to see will be starting out with v1 plus but at time t equal to 2 td you have received a v1 minus and if that v1 sorry v2 minus which would be equal to minus v1 plus and if that continues forever then you know that this is a short circuit however if you see v1 plus here and then suddenly start to see two v1 plus and continue to be constant then that would correspond to a open circuit okay what happens when you have a capacitor in parallel with a resistor which is not exactly equal to z0 so let's say this is not exactly z0 then you will see that the scope here that we have written it would be v1 plus it would go to zero because momentarily this is a short circuit pulls down the gamma l to be equal to minus 1 but eventually the capacitor open circuits the voltage will be whatever the voltage that is finally available across the resistor therefore it would reach to whatever different value okay if this is exactly equal to z0 then asymptotically it would reach v1 plus if it is less or more then the voltage can be higher or it can be lower okay so these are the type of waveforms that you are going to find when on the tdr scope or at the load when there are reactive terminals okay or reactive elements and based on uh, what kind of a voltage that you would see which is what is called as a tdr analysis you would be able to make some judgment on the nature of the loads that are present it may not be only load for example the transmission line trace that you have drawn has been broken at some midpoint okay or some other point along the transmission line you would not know that someone has scratched the pcb trace okay in that case if you launch a step voltage then what you would see is that the step would propagate but then because it is seeing a discontinuity it is like seeing an open circuit gamma l will be plus 1 at that point so the voltage that you are going to see at the input terminals of the transmission line will be v1 plus until 2 td and then suddenly it goes up to 2 v1 plus and remains constant of course i am assuming that these are all lossless transmission lines but because many practical transmission lines can be kind of approximated with this one so we we know that uh, when you have the tdr i mean so by knowing the uh, waveforms that you will see on the tdr scope then it is possible for us to determine the nature of the load whether the load is short circuit open circuit whether it has pure capacitive or pure inductive termination or there is some combination of a capacitor and inductive terminations right capacitive inductive or even resistive terminations by looking at the voltages that you see at the input terminals of the transmission line to finally you know uh, point out the usefulness of tdr as i have told you you can actually use that one to determine whether there are some discontinuities on along the transmission line as a result of uh, some problems in the pcb manufacturing or after man pcb ma manufacturing some scratches all those things and uh, you can actually you know determine not only the type of the load you can also determine the position of this type of uh, problems because the signals will take a definite time in you know they will arrive at different times as reflected by those discontinuities and by knowing what is the velocity on the, of the waves on the transmission line it is possible for us to actually pinpoint the location uh, where there are some problems with the transmission line circuit itself okay in the form of those scratches and discontinuities that i mentioned to mention the final point about this tdr analysis we have used only step voltage sources because they were like kind of easier to work with but in many practical tdr scopes one finds that instead of a step source we use a pulse source okay and the reflected voltages are also not only analyzed can also be analyzed in a very simple manner in this way there are what are called as peeling algorithms that one needs to apply in order to extract the location and the nature of the loads this is something that we can leave it for a different and a higher level course uh, and we conclude our transmission line analysis by this in this module thank you very much Thank mm -hmm. you.